In this video, we're going to talk about hexadecimal. Firstly, why do we care? Well, we care about hexadecimal because it's used in networking all over the place. As an example, when you look at the MAC address of a device, it's written in hexadecimal. What's really becoming important these days is IP version 6. IP version 6 addresses are also written in hexadecimal. So you'll see an IP address such as FE80 colon colon 1. You need to know how to do conversions from one numbering system to another. As an example, you need to know how to convert hexadecimal to binary, binary to hexadecimal, hexadecimal to decimal, decimal to hexadecimal, and all those different combinations. So if I gave you a decimal number of 1 to 8, you need to know how to convert that into binary. You need to know how to convert that into hexadecimal. These are the foundations. You need to know these foundations before you really get into networking. So build a good foundation. Learn your numbering systems, learn binary, learn hexadecimal, and it'll make your life a lot easier. Okay, so let me show you an example of where hexadecimal is used. This is a Windows 10 computer. It's actually that laptop over there, which I'm controlling from my Mac. I'm using Windows here because a lot of people have Windows computers. This is Windows 10 once again. I'm gonna type ipconfig. When I type that, you'll notice that command shows us the IP version 4 address of this computer, but it also shows an IP version 6 address. This is a hexadecimal value. Notice FE80. That's known as a link local address in IP version 6. We'll talk about that later. But for the moment, notice FE80, hexadecimal values. But let me show you a MAC address. So ipconfig slash all, I'll scroll up. There's the command. We can see that this is the name of my Windows computer. Notice here, physical address. This is for a virtual box interface written in hexadecimal. Notice the values, 0A00270000018. Those are hexadecimal values once again. Let's have a look at the wireless card. So here we've got a wireless network adapter. This is the physical address or MAC address. Here is another one, physical address or MAC address. Once again, these are hexadecimal values. Now we can look at the MAC address on my MacBook as an example. So forgive the pun of looking at the Mac on a Mac. Going to the wireless connections, open network preferences, Here's my Wi-Fi interface. I'll go to advanced, go to hardware, and you can see here is the MAC address of my wireless interface card. Now I've hidden that because a MAC address is unique to a device. I can see that once again by going to control panel in Windows, go to network and internet, network and sharing center, change adapter settings, and I can look at the MAC address of any network interface card on my computer. So here's my Wi-Fi network interface card or NIC. Go to details and here's the MAC address. Now I actually changed the MAC address of this network interface card. Notice it's a number OE5544332211. I manually configured that. If you wanna know how to do that, you can watch this video, which I've put on YouTube, but you don't have to do that, but you need to know how to read MAC addresses and what they mean. And to help us do that, let's make this practical and use Packet Tracer. So please open Packet Tracer and follow me and make sure that you see something similar. The numbers that you get may be different, but we'll manually configure MAC addresses in Packet Tracer because it's easy to do that. So make sure that you can view the MAC addresses. I'm then going to show you how to work with hexadecimal and how to convert numbers from binary to hex, hexadecimal to decimal and so forth. So the first thing is let's get a switch and I'll get a 3560 switch and drag that into the topology. I'll go to end devices, grab a PC, grab a laptop, add that to the topology, go to network connections and get a straight through cable and connect the PC's ethernet interface to the switch on gigabit 001. You don't have to use exactly the same interfaces. It's really up to you. But what I've done here is connect the PC to the switch. To make it easier to follow, I'll go to preferences and I'll show the port labels in my diagram. 
So fast ethernet zero on the PC is connected to gigabit 101 on the switch. I'll connect the second gig interface to the laptop on fast ethernet zero. So we've got our devices in our topology. The switch needs a power supply. So I'll grab a power supply and add that to the switch. And as you can see, the switch is now booting up. But now let's view the MAC addresses on the devices. So on PC one, go to fast ethernet zero. This is the MAC address of the PC by default. I'm gonna give it an IP address of 10.1.1.1 with a subnet mask of slash 24 or 255.255.255.0. If you don't understand that yet, don't worry too much. We'll talk a lot about subnetting in later videos. But for the moment, I've configured the PC with those details. I'll go to desktop, command prompt, and if we type IP config like you would on a Windows computer, Notice there's the IP address of the PC, IP config slash all, there is the MAC address of the PC. Not easy to read, we'll change that in a moment. But for the moment, I wanna show you that the switch will learn those MAC addresses, so hence it's important for you to learn hexadecimal. On the laptop, go to config, fast ethernet zero. I'll configure this laptop with an IP address of 10.1.1.2 and a subnet mask of that, 255.255.255.0. There's the MAC address of this PC. So if I go to command prompt on the laptop and type ipconfig slash all, there's the IP address, there's the MAC address. Back on the PC, PC1, PC starts with 0004, laptop starts with 0006. The first half of this address is the vendor code. Second half is a unique identifier for the MAC address. But notice please, when I type a command such as ARP-A, it says there are no ARP entries. ARP is used to find the MAC address of another device in the network. It's basically a broadcast sent out into the network saying, who has this IP address? And then that device will reply back with its MAC address. So back on the laptop, if I type ARP-A, notice it says no ARP entries are found. ARP is used to discover the MAC address of another device. In Ethernet, devices have MAC addresses allocated to them by vendors. If I wanna to talk to your device, I need to know what your MAC address is to be able to send the traffic onto the Ethernet network. So if the laptop pings the PC, it's basically gonna send a broadcast into the network saying who has this IP address, and then that PC will reply back. Notice now when we type ARP-A, we see that this IP address is using this MAC address, and that's correct per the information on PC1. Back on the PC, ipconfig slash all shows us that the PC has this IP address and this MAC address. The laptop has learnt the MAC address of the PC, and in the same way, the PC has learnt the MAC address of the laptop. So that's an example where hexadecimal values are used. But it's not only there, if I have a look at the switch, I'm gonna bypass the initial configuration on the switch. Now don't worry too much if you don't know the commands on Cisco switches in a lot of detail yet. You'll learn as we go along. Enable takes us to privilege mode, and here I can type show MAC address table to see the MAC address table on the switch. The switch has learnt where the devices are. The whole idea with a switch is when it receives traffic on one port, it needs to switch that traffic out of another port needs to know where the devices are so that it can efficiently send the traffic to only the correct ports. So in other words, if traffic arrives on this interface going to the laptop, we only wanna send it out of this interface. Now the switch doesn't have other interfaces connected at the moment, but if we did, we wouldn't wanna send that traffic out of all interfaces. We would wanna limit it to this one interface. So the switch learns where devices are in the network. If we change the MAC address of the PC, so going back to the PC's config, I'll click on fast ethernet zero. I could, as an example, set the MAC address to 00C0 and then just make it a number like that, a whole bunch of ones. Notice a MAC address consists of six hexadecimal values. This is hex, which is the vendor code, and then six hexadecimal values, which is the unique identifier for the MAC address. A hex value is four binary bits, and I'll explain that in more detail in a moment. This is a 48-bit number. We've got 12 hexadecimal values in a MAC address, 
12 times 4, 48 bits. Each number here is a hexadecimal number. What I'll do now is change the MAC address of the laptop. So go to config, fast ethernet is zero. Let's make that 00C02222 and a bunch of twos. So I've changed the MAC address of the laptop as well. If I type IP config, that's the IP address to slash all, make this bigger. That shows us the MAC address of the PC has changed or the laptop in this case has changed. So now, op-a, the op cache has timed out or has been flushed in this example, there are no op entries. If the laptop pings the PC and type op-a now, you can see that the MAC address value has been updated. So the laptop has learnt the new MAC address associated with the PC. And in the same way, the PC has learnt, that was the previous entry, the PC has learnt the new MAC address of the laptop. And the switch will have learnt the new MAC addresses. Now it still has the old MAC addresses in its MAC address table. They will time out after a period of time. But for the moment, it's got both the old MAC addresses and the new MAC addresses in its MAC address table. A switch learns where the MAC addresses of devices are in the network, and then basically switches the traffic from one MAC address to another, depending on who's talking to who. So as you can see here, MAC addresses are used in a lot of places. You need to know how to read MAC addresses. You need to know what that means. If I tell you that that's a 48-bit number, you need to know that. Why, why is it 48? So let's talk about the theory and I'll show you how to do conversions from one numbering system to another. Don't forget that IP version six also uses hexadecimal. So if I type IP config slash all on the PC, notice link local IP version six address. DHCP client identifier. These are all hexadecimal numbers. We've got a Bluetooth hexadecimal number. Hexadecimal is used in multiple places. You need to know how to work with hexadecimal.